Well, tonight, hello, and welcome to the film version of Virginia Woolf's Orlando. It's one of the classics and one of the favourites of the art house cinema circuits. In fact, this is one movie that broke out of the art houses. As its reputation grew after its release in 1992, it settled comfortably into the mainstream movie houses, and it's true that a lot of the mainstream audiences did come away fascinated, but not all that sure of what it was really about. In fact, Orlando is, well, what, it's, it's not exactly a love story. Someone did much better than that. I can't remember who it was. I wish it had been me. But the critic has called it the longest and most fascinating love letter in literature. As good as you can get about Orlando, that is. The love letter was, and I suppose it is, still is, from Virginia to Vita Sackville West. Virginia had fallen in love with Vita in time. They, they would share a house in the country and there would be uh, misunderstandings sometimes and quarrels and Vita would do the gardening while Virginia wrote her in her study upstairs. But when Orlando was begun, Vita, to Virginia anyway, was a lovely androgynous figure still wrapped in the mysteries of a newly discovered love. So uh, in her love letter, Virginia gave Vita the things that any life could wish for. Orlando, played by Tilda Swinton, begins as a pretty youth, and he pleases Queen Elizabeth I so well that she grants him a magnificent estate, and she tells him not to wither or grow old, and so over the next 400 years, he doesn't. But on the way, he does change sex. The once famous transvestite Quentin Crisp is terrific as the not-so-virgin queen, Writer-director Sally Potter is a lyricist and a choreographer as well as a filmmaker. And uh, her film doesn't always follow Virginia Woolf's novel really closely. Uh, she gives it more than a touch of the operetta, in fact. There's even an ice ballet. And all in all, Sally Potter has made a lush and quite beautiful film out of Virginia Woolf's A Lamp.